In this video, I want to talk about perineal tendonitis. What is it? What might be causing it? And why it might be trickier than some other tendon injuries to get rid of. So stay tuned. Thanks for checking out the channel. My name's John, I'm the head therapist here at John W Sports Injury. We are looking to do three simple things for you. Help you understand your body, so you can be getting rid of any pain, problems, or weaknesses, imbalances, so that ultimately you can drive forwards and hit those sport, exercise, and wellness goals. So if this sounds like the type of content that you wanna be checking out, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, or as we make our way through the video and you are thinking this is helpful content for you, Make sure you like it so that others can see this content too, and then hit subscribe. But let's get on to what we're talking about today, perineal tendonitis. Now, what is it? Well, where is our perineal tendon? We know that tendons are something that join muscles to bone. Our perineal muscles are the group of muscles in the very outside of the leg. So not quite as far around as the shin bone, not quite as deep as the calf, but along these outside. Now, where we typically might get the pain is in the outside of the foot area here. The tendon of the perineal group comes round and almost wraps around this outside bony lump that we call the lateral malleolus and comes in and attaches onto the outside of the foot. So if you're getting that pain wrapping around the back of the ankle down the side of the foot, potentially even traveling up the leg, that may be something that we call perineal tendonitis. So now, if you're somebody who's watched a lot of my content and you'll think it's a tendon injury, what we need to be doing then is stretching out the muscle that actually uh, attaches into that tendon. Well, here's a problem when it comes to the perineal tendonitis because we often call the perineals uh, a group of unstretchables. There's only a few muscles in our body that make it very difficult to stretch, but the perineal group could be one of those. So. In which case, what can you be doing better to directly help your perineal muscles? Well, this, in my opinion, is where things like self-massage comes into play. So if you've got something like a massage gun, these work fantastically well, um, and you are looking to be aiming these into the outside of the leg. We're not looking to be going around that bony part there, that could be sore. We wanna be relaxing out this muscle tissue. So working up and down the outside of the leg for two to five minutes or so could be really helpful. Haven't got a massage gun? Not a problem. This is something that you can get in and even using something like your own knuckles, look to be working through the outside of those muscles. And what you'll probably find in my experience is that you will find these sore bits, these sore areas. If you find one of those, just hold on that for a period of 30 seconds to a minute you'll feel that tissue start to relax, and then we can carry on looking to work through there. A second thing we always and undoubtedly want to do is to ease some of your pain, ease some of your problems in the area. So this is where we might use things like ice uh, or some anti-inflammatory being our aim to calm down that tendon. So if your pain feels particularly acute, particularly sore, this is where we can target the outside of the ankle here and apply some ice for about five to 10 minutes a couple of times a day to start to ease that inflammation being caused by these problematic muscle structures. So they're probably two of the main things that we wanna be doing in the short term. We wanna be affecting the muscle that's acting on that tendon and we wanna be calming down the damage itself at the, at the tendon itself. But what can we be doing more longer term, making sure that this isn't a long term problem for you? Well, one of the things that we want to know is the amount of movement that we have at that ankle, a movement that we call dorsiflexion. So dorsiflexion is the amount of movement that we have taking our knee over our toe. And this is what we want to be assessing, ultimately finding out if there's perhaps a restriction at the problem side. So if you take your good side or your non-affected side first, what you want to do from a kneeling position is find a wall and we're gonna perform what we call a knee to wall test. Now all you're looking to do here is to keep your hips nice and still and drive your knee towards the wall so that you can touch it without your heel lifting. If you can do that, bring the toes a little bit further away from the wall and repeat that exercise. Now, you will hit a point 
where you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to get any further without that heel starting to rise. At that point, you've gone too far, go a little closer to the wall and ultimately work out that maximum distance. Now we want that distance from the wall to be about eight to 10 centimeters. Now this is my good side. I know for me that I have stronger dorsiflexion on my right hand side. Let's see what happens when I bring the left hand side in to exactly the same place. So I can see my distance away from the wall was there. As I try to move through here, you can see that I don't hit anymore. I don't quite get to that wall without lifting my heel. So therefore I know I have a restriction in this movement of dorsiflexion. Now, what can typically happen here is that actually then some of those muscles in those areas have to work a little bit harder. And this can definitely leave us a little bit more predisposed to something like um, uh, per perineal tendonitis. So what can we do about this? Well, this is where stretching comes into play and not necessarily directly stretching those perineal muscles, but some of the other muscles in that area that are going to improve your movements of dorsiflexion. So these are things like your calf stretching or your gastrocnemia stretching, which is held for 30 seconds, holding that position. We can also do a very similar stretch but for what we call your soleus. So this is where you can see the stretch is repeated, but with a bent leg. Again, we're looking to be holding these stretches for about 30 seconds. Another thing that I would encourage you to check is your balance in the area. Why am I asking you to check your balance in related to perineal tendonitis? Well, because as I mentioned, our perineals sit on the outside of the leg and provide support and stability to the outside of the leg. But the main thing that is doing that and supporting our ankle is our ligament in here. And we call this your ATFL ligament. Now, if somebody has a history of ankle sprains, um, if somebody has recently done an ankle sprain, what we might find is that this ligament isn't quite performing as it should do. So what then happens, because we still require that stability, what happens is the surrounding structures that have an assisting role actually have to step up and work a little bit harder. So what may happen if we have a weaker ankle on one side is that these perineal muscles become overactive doing the role of the ligament. So if you are suffering with this, I would encourage you to test your balance. How do you do this? Well, what you can look to do is to stand again onto your good leg first. All you want to be doing is closing your eyes and holding that balance. And you can see, as soon as I close my eyes, I become far wobblier. Why? Because I've taken away that stimulus coming into my eyes um, and actually all the work has gone onto my ankle. So can you then close your onto single leg, close those eyes and hold that position? Then what we can look to do is change and go on to the other side. Same thing happens here. Now what happens for me is that I instantly feel myself toppling forwards um, or toppling inwards actually because my ankle ligaments just aren't as strong as perhaps they should be on my left hand side. So this is another thing that may leave me or you predisposed to perineal tendonitis. So how, if you found that that balance is tricky for you, how can you be improving that? Well, that in itself is a great exercise because you will feel those ligaments being recruited. It's something that you can be doing daily, looking to just hold that position. If that becomes easy for you, what you can then do is try the same thing, but standing on something like a pillow or a cushion, which gives you that added balance challenge of not being on the flat floor. So the final thing that perhaps you might want to be working on in order to improve this is to make yourself strong enough for your demands. So here what we might be looking to do is to go in into an exercise, something like a single leg squat and a single leg calf raise. Because when do we typically get perineal tendonitis? Well, these might be occurring when we're doing things like excessive running or walking. Something where we're having to use this motion of dorsiflexion, use the stability of the ankle repeatedly, and that can then highlight some of these dysfunctions. So what we wanna do is we wanna make ourselves strong in those two components so that it doesn't pose such a challenge to those ankle stabilizing structures. So, as I mentioned, you can go into an exercise like a single leg squat, standing on one leg like we did in the balance exercise, and just looking to drop down into that position and come back up. This will be an exercise that might well be familiar to you. Whenever we're doing single leg exercises, I always encourage doing three sets of six repetitions. You then repeat that on the other side. Again, I always encourage people to start on the good side and then test the bad side. 
Why? Because that gives you your benchmark. It gives you that comparison between good side and bad side to really highlight any of those imbalances. Following on from doing the single leg uh, squat, what we can look to be doing is something like a single leg calf raise, where we're looking to go up relatively quickly, but the important bit is on the way down, we're looking to go a little bit slower. Why is this? This is what we call eccentric loading. We know that this deceleration is something that can be really good in restoring healthy tendon tissue. So can perform these single leg exercises, these single leg calf raises, we're looking to do three sets of six. Normal practice, good side first of all, followed by the bad side. If you can get these to feel even on both sides, then this should leave you stronger around those ankles, better equipped to go and do that running, that walking, and making sure that hopefully we're not only getting rid of that perineal tendonitis, but the most important thing is making sure that it isn't coming back.